Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and of course BMG Drive. Currently a trending thing in the automotive world is electric pickup trucks. For example, the Ford F-150 Lightning, you got the Tesla Cybertruck, you've got the Rivian R1T and so on, so on, so on and so on. So there's a lot of electric pickup trucks coming to the market in the next few years and I thought we'd go ahead and build ourselves an electric pickup truck. It's going to be a modern slash futuristic truck with an electric powertrain. I mean, we'll have an electric-ish powertrain. In Beam and G, I'll do my best to convert the truck to electric, and it's going to function as an electric vehicle would. So first things first, what panel type do we choose for this absolutely tank of a vehicle? Now, uh, the competitors to this obviously are like the Cybertruck, the F-150 Lightning, uh, maybe even the GMC Hummer EV which is very, very, very heavy. And I think we're going to go ahead and go for the really, really, really heavy route because that just sounds so dumb and I love it. So let's go for what partial aluminum panels for now. Um, and I think that'll be fine. That's futuristic, obviously. Uh, that's what would be on this vehicle. Let's go for a, what, monocoque chassis. We could go for a ladder frame, but some vehicles um, are having a unibody construction. Some are having a ladder frame design. And I think for the brand that we're doing today, uh, it makes more sense to have it as a monocoque, which might not be a real pickup truck, but trucks do have it. And uh, some electric trucks do have it. And it seems like it could be a thing that electric trucks might have in the future. Let's go for what? AHS steel for the chassis material. Any engine placement is fine. Uh, double wishbone front and double wishbone rear, maybe even multi-link rear. So an independent front and rear suspension. So uh, pretty fancy suspension. This is not as much of an off-roader truck as it is more of a street truck that is also electric. Uh, new engine. So the engine doesn't actually matter at all. But I do want to go for a really, really big, really, really heavy engine just in the front to add some weight to this vehicle. So let's just give it a massive engine, which is the exact opposite of what we're really using it for because we're making an electric vehicle that's environmentally friendly in quotations. Um, but we'll give it a massive engine just so it adds weight to the vehicle. And now this is going to be interesting. Let's just go ahead and do all this stuff. Uh, sure. Yep. That's fine. All right. So the engine doesn't run at all. Let's lower the RPM a little bit just so it doesn't die right now. And let's just go like this. Lots of fuel. So 200 horsepower, 400 torque. It's terrible. I love it. So we are going to be using this body today. This is the four-door body. If we can actually just go ahead and stretch it a little bit, we'll get, you know, the four doors. Now, I know electric cars don't actually have any more than one gear, so it doesn't actually matter what we do. We'll just give it a four-speed dual-clutch transmission. I want to give it a seven-speed. I just want to simulate how fast this thing's going to accelerate. Um, if we just actually give this thing tons more power. All right, so we're basically simulating how much power this thing has if it's an electric truck. So 730 horsepower seems fine. Obviously, it's going to have more torque than that, but that's fine for now. Okay, um, let's continue on here. It's going to be all-wheel drive. We'll give it a 7-speed dual clutch just for acceleration in automation. I just want to give give us a rough idea of how fast this thing can accelerate. And let's make the, the fender arches a little bigger. Just a little bigger. So quite large tires front and rear, but I think that's reasonable for what we're building. Alloy wheels. Um... Let's give it big old brakes. So let's go six pots in the front, four pots in the rear. This thing is still going to be, you know, a rather good performing vehicle just because it's going to be so fast and they need the brakes to keep up with that. Fully clad under tray. Um, we'll give it no cooling because we don't actually need that. Let's make it a five seater with a luxury interior. And a pr no, we'll give it a premium interior and we'll give it a premium heads up display and all electric, all the best here. Probably this is the future after all. And we'll do, we'll do a sport tune. It's going to be a sportier truck, but only weighs 6,500 pounds, which sounds like a lot for anyone outside of America. But that's that's like a reasonable truck weight, honestly, at this point. And I think it needs to weigh a, a bit more. The cost, though, only 65 grand, which is not bad. We do need it to weigh more. This thing needs to weigh more. What? How do we do that? So a 13 liter V10 with weigh how much power? <laughs> 890 horsepower. That's reasonable. That's good. We're still going to work on tweaking the weight, I think, a little more, because this thing is not, you know, it's not heavy enough. This thing is not heavy enough. We'll get cooling flaps. We'll give it just everything we can to actually add weight to the car. 6,900 pounds. Let's give it a luxury interior. 80,000. That seems more reasonable. All right, so I've gone back and given it steel panels and steel chassis. We can actually go for a ladder chassis type, and that's going to add some more weight. And I think we'll do that just because I want to give this thing a more realistic weight. Uh, ladder chassis is still fine. Steel panels and, you know, chassis material, probably not so realistic, but that's okay. That's all right. Uh, we did save some money. We're at $70,000 now with a luxury interior, luxury HUD, and we've got, you know, good safety. We have air suspension even, which is pretty fancy, honestly. We'll give it active sway butters just to add a little bit of weight there. Three pounds. That's, that's more than zero pounds. So, it costs $73,000. It gets 5.4 MPG, which is good. That's fine, right? That's fine. You know, it's it's going to be electric and beam and G. Don't worry about it. It's going to be fine. So a thousand horsepower is, is probably more than we're going to have, I think. But like, we'll leave it like that for now. 
So I think what we're going to do is design this truck in a time lapse, then I'll go over the design, then we'll hop into Beam and G Drive, and I want to drive the absolute crap out of this thing to see how it drives. Uh, so sit back, relax guys, and of course, I hope you enjoy. Finally, we are starting my electric pickup truck build. Now, what I'm doing is shaping out the front end right now with reverse dog tape, uh, making the, of course, basic front shapes. And then what I'm going to do is use grill bars and LED light bars to actually make the insides of the, the housing for the headlights, for the grill, etc., etc. This time lapse is longer than most because this build took longer than most. This build took about three or four hours to build today, which is quite a bit longer than most. So what I'm doing still is still trimming out the front end of the car using the light bars etc etc i do change up the front end a little bit to have these sort of l-shaped daytime red lights in the bottom the front headlights are pretty much done now with these sort of up upside down l shapes on both left and right side i have two main projector beams and a turn signal built in there as well so the main grill itself now this car being electric this truck being electric doesn't actually need a real grill so i have bars covering the entire thing uh basically i've worked on the front bumper of the car adding some more details to the side i could tell this is just going very gosh darn fast wow uh, adding some more details to the front end of the car itself uh, and the front end's pretty much done. I will tweak it later on. What I'm doing right now is actually sort of working on the fender flares. I do add these fixture sort of bolt-on fender flares, adding a bit more detail to the front grille. And now I'm back on the fender flares, just adding more details to make it so you can actually... So you can't see the body behind the fender flares because, you know, they're not perfect. They're just there. Adding 3D wheels and tires to the front of the car and the back of the car so it looks a lot better. These sort of off-road rugged wheels and tires are sort of what I went with. Now the side. Now this side took actually quite a bit longer than what I thought it would take. Uh, adding some body molding and basically cutting out the entire side of the car and the whole car itself. All the doors are using uh, custom body body molding and body work to cut out the actual doors and stuff. I did add a sort of panoramic sunroof or panoramic roof that goes across the entire roof of the entire car. Uh, it's probably not fully glass. It just sort of looks like glass because it looks really cool. Adding a bit more details to the side now and trimming out the upper part of the doors of the car. Again, this all these small details, I think, work together to make a really nice design at the end. So the side looks, it's got a pretty interesting look with some unique indentations, etc. Adding the charge port to the side, because all electric cars need a charge port, so I've put a, uh, a placeholder there for now. Uh, working on the fender flares a little bit more. I have chosen a name for this vehicle, but I'll talk about it later on. Adding a lighting bolt that's going to actually light up later on in the video. Uh, adding a QSRE badge, that's the performance trim for this vehicle. This is the top-end performance model. Adding some more details to the hood and finishing off the panoramic roof on the back of the glass of the car itself adding some more details to the front adding some more body molding etc to sort of get that shape going properly adding a tunnel cover to the rear and a bit more details on the hood now this thing is going to be aggressive it's going to be futuristic so it's got a bunch of crazy lines on the hood adding more details to the rear wheels uh now cutting up the taillights now this is where i had a bit of difficulty actually so i cut up the taillights and i actually didn't like it so i deleted it all and restarted the whole thing again and came up with this We've got this similar shape to uh, as, as the front headlights on the rear. So we have this sort of C shape uh, where the turn signals will be built in as well. And then adding a bit more for the daytime running lights, etc. So it's got, day it's got rear daytime running lights. And now what I'm doing is adding a light bar to the rear to finish it off because any modern pickup truck needs to have a light bar. I wish I could make the taillights in 3D, but sadly I can't. So I went back there, added some more details on the side tailgate, adding some more details, the rivets to the actual fender flares. And now I'm working back on the rear. So adding the even more details to the rear taillights, making them all flush, making them work properly and giving the, the rear latch, the rear hatch, the tailgate a proper definition as well. Adding a trooper badge to the back and some more detailing on there, like a reverse light. And in front of us, is the 2020 Neon Trooper QSRE. All right, guys, so like I said, this is the 2020 Neon Trooper QSRE. And I know, I know, I know Trooper is a car name in real life, but that's okay. We're using it for our vehicle today. It has got a similar front end to some other Neon cars in the past, uh, like the Neon Masquerade and the Neon Extravaganza. Y yes, Neon makes the stupidest names for their cars, and that's okay. All right, so we got this Neon sort of badging in the front here. We got these sort of... They look like a C-shaped headlights, but the actual daytime run lights are only a part of that, so they'll go straight down, uh, like an upside-down L, into another L. So it goes just like an, a, a one big sort of square, or a rectangle in the front end of the car. We've got our projector headlights right here. We've got our turn signals right here. So these are our turn signals, which may be a little small, but that's okay. And we have our, actually, our badge lights up, which is pretty cool as well. We also have a badge right here, 
that lights up as well. It's a little electric badge because this thing is all electric. I have made one previous neon electric vehicle in the past, and that was called the Masquerade. I also called the QSRE, so this is the top performance, you know, high-end performance version of a vehicle, the QSRE brand. So the front end, we've got this sort of U-shape or like a, almost like a V-shaped grill that goes into the headlights. And we have a bunch of stuff down here. So we have the turn signals. We have another grill down here, which actually doesn't do anything. It's just for show. There's, a, there's literally glass in front of it. We have this sort of interesting uh, brushed aluminum and plastic sort of bit here just to give the front end a little more texture and design. Now, with it being an electric car, we don't actually need a grill. So that's why I'm pretty much the, most of the entire grill is just bars. Uh, onto the side. If we actually hide the body here, the entire side was pretty much redone. Look at this. The entire car is basically redone, actually. Uh, I made pretty much custom indentations for the door because I didn't want it to be smooth. Uh, we have this little trim that kicks up over here into the big rear bumper. Pretty much the same in the back. Uh, we'll go to the back end of the car itself. So we got these big honking rear lights. So it's got these at light bars. We have the brake lights. We only have one light on the back. So just a brake light. But the turret signals and everything else would be in there as well. Just the brake light is just, you know, what I wanted to do there. Uh, a QSRE badge. Neon is actually my Chinese brand. So this is a Chinese brand. A truck made for the American market. Which probably wouldn't sell well, but it's pretty cool. Anyways, um, so this right here is actually the charge port. There's one on each side. It's this QSRE, obviously. And that's also the charge port. This vehicle is going to be brought into BeamNG. Uh, one thing I have to do, though, while I bring it into BeamNG is actually modify it. Um, A, actually, I'm going to get rid of the wheels and tires. As you can see here, there is tires underneath there. Um, the real ones. I'm going to delete the fake ones for BeamNG. I'll change the wheels to different wheel design. And I'm going to tweak the engine because this thing has to be an electric vehicle in BeamNG drive. So what I'm going to do is convert it to electric or as close as we can because, you know, uh, making a perfect electric vehicle is hard and I like to do the quick route. So we're going to make this thing electric in BeamNG drive. It's going to drive and act just as an electric car would. Um, and we're going to drive it in BeamNG and see how it drives. So I'll see you guys in BeamNG in just a sec. Alright guys, so we're in BeamNG Drive with the Neon Trooper QSRE, and the thing looks pretty gosh darn me. We are at the West Coast USA Drag Strip because I gotta start it off with a drag race. Okay, this thing has like a thousand horsepower, so I will show you the horsepower and torque after the drag race, but first let's do a drag race. So we're gonna do a 0-60 to 60 time as well as the quarter mile time to see how fast this thing is in both. So, uh, we're gonna launch it actually from only 2,000 RPM or so, or 1,800 RPM. So, 0- to 100 kilometers an hour in 2.8 seconds so that's that's pretty it's pretty fast if you ask me but it definitely tapers off and the quarter mile 11.1 around about 11 seconds 11.1 seconds in my testing 11.1 in the quarter mile that is only like half a second slower than like a mclaren 720s or a lamborghini aventador so it's it's only like half a second slower in the quarter mile uh if not less than that than those competitors which is absolutely insane for a very, very, very heavy vehicle. And we're going to wait in just a sec as well. Because this thing is an absolute tank. But let's just go to free roam here. Respawn the car. So, horsepower and torque. This thing at peak, about 1,000 horsepower. Which is not bad. But it makes 1,000 horsepower pretty much right at launch. So it launches quite low. If we actually just launch it with our brake. Brake boost it. So we are brake boosting at 800 horsepower. And we have a monstrous... 3,500 or 3,750 pound feet of torque, which is crazy, obviously. You can definitely see the torque curve tapers off the entire time, and by the time it reaches peak RPM, around 14,000 RPM of the motor, then it has no power at all. But yeah, definitely for, and if we actually restart the car, if we actually just try to launch it again, you can also tell it's dead silence, so the engine is gone, there's no engine sound, there's no exhaust. If you launch it right here, so up to about 120, 130 kilometers an hour, it's quite quick, but after that, it definitely tapers off. But I'll let you guys listen for a sec. Can you guys hear the electric motor? It's very, very, very faint. Uh, I was going to give this thing a custom sound, but I decided against it just because I think this thing would be a lot cooler with a very, very silent electric motor, very quiet electric motor. Definitely, it's eerie to drive it, to say the least. Let's actually hop into... Um, the grid map, I want to see, I want to see two things. I want to see the top speed of this thing, the flat out top speed, because I haven't checked. And I want, then we'll just jump this car because we're going to jump every car. L let's do that. So top speed and then jump the car. All right, all right, all right. This is the grid map. So we're just going to go for a bit of a drive here. Obviously, we're not going to have too much grip because it's grid map and it's not a prep drag surface. Uh, so we're just going flat out here. Now this thing makes uh, at the top of the RPM range about 400 horsepower. About 400 horsepower for an 8,000 pound brick on wheels. Is going to be pretty hard to push this thing, but we'll see. It's still going pretty strong at 260. Uh, and we're still making like, like 
you know, a thousand horsepower. We're running really like 600 horsepower, or so right here, not a thousand. We're running really around 600 horsepower, I think, something like that. So it's not terribly low on power, but we are definitely struggling here. 270 kilometers an hour. 271, two. Obviously, since BMG is now real life, we, we would not have an independent runway. So I think we're I think we'll probably finish off there. 275 kilometers an hour, uh, which is like what 170 miles an hour, which is still incredibly incredibly fast. We are fading our brakes. I like that squatting. I like that squatting. So let's hop into the jump arena, see how this thing jumps. And lastly, we're gonna finish off this video with the jump arena. I'll leave a download link for this truck down below if you guys want to download this thing. I'll let download the uh, the BeamNG mod file for it if you guys want to check it out in BeamNG. Uh, I just want to give a huge shout out to my channel members before we actually jump the car. Thanks so much to Childish Sin and DD Man for being quad turbo members. Thanks so much to Ruben for being a big boy turbo member. Thanks to the twin turbo members and thanks to everyone else as well. You guys are awesome and I really appreciate you guys. Uh, and let's just jump the car here and see what it does. Okay, that was my bad. Okay, my bad, guys. We'll finish off here. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. And of course, I will see you guys next time. Only 270 kilometers an hour, so honestly, not that good at all. But a good jump, and we stuck the landing. I'll take that. See you guys next time.